welcome from my side. So my name is Vivian and I will tell you, talk to you more about some of the examples that we now have heard from embedded AI, custom AI, what is all this about and show you some of how we have been doing this. So business AI is the key word of today. And you have seen this architecture slide before. But just to iterate, Joule again will be available across our, all of our cloud applications. If you go, for example, in our S4 system and ask it something there, and then jump over to our HR system, Joule will remember you, right? It will remember what you've asked in one system and then in the other system, because again, it has all the underlying authentication and understands your role. No, you will not be able to ask what your colleague is earning or um, because this is again, it's confidential in the way because Joule knows who you are and what you're able to do. Then on top of this, we have the embedded AI capabilities where we'll show you more examples. And then on top of this, we have the AI foundation giving you the tools to build your own unique AI use cases. So let's get started with Joule. So here we are in our S4 system. And you can open up Joule and you can already greet it with some of the options of what you can do with Joule. You want to understand maybe more about the different sales orders that are currently in your system available. Joule opens these up and you can then get directly guide you to this particular sales order that you want to look more into. But maybe you're a bit new in the organization. So you want to understand what is a delivery notification in a sales order. And Joule can again also help you there to understand more what this is about and actually even show you where this information is coming from. Because here again, we're showing you this groundedness on, for example, where the search results are happening. So here you can see that it was grounded on our SAP help documentation, but you can also do this on your own business data. So if you have any kind of policy documents, if you have anything what you want to have that Jewel should reply to, we can do this by extending also Jewel. But you also might be able to, for example, understand more how you can create a sales order from a PDF document. So getting this help, getting this guidance, this is also what Joule will be able to do for you. And for example, then guide you to exactly in this application of where you're able to do this. So in an essence, Joule can help you with three things. It can show you where you do things, so guide you to the right application. It can show you how to do this task directly within the Joule window. And it can also help you to show you how to do things based on either our documentation or, again, your own <coughs> policies. So we already said we will have 80% of the most used tasks available by the end of the year. So across all of our different lines of business, and you can see already where Joule is available, where we have made Joule available, and where Joule will become available over the next year. So if you're in any of the walls, a Q1 to Q3, talk to us on how you can just activate and start leveraging the power of Joule that is available there because it is an activation. It is not an implementation. It's really just about getting your admin to help you activate it in your particular software area. But we're taking it even one step further. We said that you need actually only two co-pilots in your organization. And why do we say two? Well, we have heard it before. We will bring Joule together with SAP Microsoft Copilot. And this really will be a bi-directional integration. What that means is if you are on Joule, you could ask it, check my team's calendar. When can we have the next offsite, for example, and create a calendar invite. And you can do this directly in Joule that guiding you to Outlook. But the same way, you can also be in Microsoft Copilot and then ask Copilot, Okay, for this offsite that we're planning, what is actually the budget? How much can we spend? And this is what you then get withdrawn from the SAP system where co-pilots will interact with Joule to get the right information. So it's really the seamless integration between these two co-pilots that we will see at the end of this year. But we will take it again one step higher. So we said that we will deliver these 100 use cases by the end of the year. And actually, we were wrong because we delivered them already last week. So all of these 100 AI, generative AI use cases are available across all of our 
um, of our enterprise in all of the different areas. So we have them across all of our different technologies, but again, we take it one step further by also having over 450 plus partner AI applications and over 150 even more coming because we have this platform where we also open up to our partners to deliver more of these AI innovations which are specifically for particular industries that we also are able to then address your specific needs. So let's now look at two examples. And for today, I want to look with, with you into the head of procurement and the head of HR. So let's start with the head of procurement. What is one of those things that if you put yourself in the shoes of a head of procurement, that's one of the most time consuming tasks? It often is when we talk to our customers, this managing the category in the right way, finding the right way of where you can address the product with the right market. So, and thereby, we have here a category manager that wants to look into creating the right market for an industrial pump. You can see it's about the competitive priority. It's about the buyer versus supplier about. It's about creating the, finding the right supplements for, the, uh, for this area and if there's something available. And by just quickly generating the answers, by taking the product as well as the market data that is underlying it together in this, it generates a diagram with understanding, okay, your product that you have been looking into and the market that you want to tap into, how big and how good is it to tap into this market? But at the same time, you also get in plain language an understanding of what this market looks like so that you can address this market with the right product fit. Of course, we need to understand what is the value behind this. So obviously talking about all of the AI, and we heard it from yesterday before, it needs to be relevant, it needs to be reliable, and it needs to address and help you in your business. So let's do a quick numbers game. So if you would have 90 category managers in your organization, and they would need one month of planning for each of these different products, it would take you around 16,000 hours. With the help of AI and this particular feature, it would bring this down to seven we would save 7,000 hours, which would equal to over 200,000 US dollars per month. And I think, again, this brings really the relevantness of the business, of what we're trying to do with business AI. Because we're not just putting any kind of AI features out there. We're really looking into the specific industries, into the different processes where we have acquired the data, where we understand what are the most used common tasks, and we embed the AI capabilities directly in there so that it can generate exactly these kind of numbers for you and your organization. So let's look now from the head of procurement into the head of HR. Who of you, a question to you in hands up, has created a performance goal in their life before and needed to put it somewhere in the system? A performance goal? I think almost all of us have needed to do this in their lives before. So now let's look at how generative AI can actually help you exactly do this, maybe much more accurate and even quicker in, in creating these performance goals. So you want in your organization, of course, as part of AI, right, looking into creating more innovations and deliver more innovations for in the following year. And yet generated by just having this one keyword. And thereby Jewel will help you to create a description, create milestones, define a due date, all of this already predefined, you can of course go then back, enhance it a bit, regenerate it, and then you have a goal created in the system. Again here, if we look at the numbers, if you would have 2, uh, 20,000 employees, and roughly each employee would need to create three goals, these three goals again would equal to 60,000 goals, and if you would need to really do it diligently, right? Write out the goal, write a description, define milestones, define due dates, you would then have needed 15 minutes per goal, and that would equal to 15,000 hours, where you can save 5,000 hours, and that again equals you to a time around of like 150,000 US dollars. Again, equalizing and showing the value of what generative AI can bring in your organization. So let's pause here for a second. I showed you a couple of examples of how Joule and what Joule can do. I showed you also a couple of examples across this embedded AI capabilities, but these were only two of Gen AI capabilities. We have 100 available already, and on top of this, all of the partners 
AI capabilities and also just normal AI capabilities. You have seen in Manos presentations all of the things that are currently available. So reach out to us if there's something of interest for you. But one thing that I want you to remember from today is that we also have you give you the tools to develop your own. So we have the capability of really bringing the things that we use for developing Joule and developing our embedded AI, we give you the same tools. So we embed AI across all of our cloud solutions and we also give you the same tools to develop these AI in your own organization. If you have this particular really unique idea or something that really is specific to your particular area, this is what you can use the AI foundation that is part of our technology platform. So let's go a bit more into what that is and one of the particular areas that we have in there. So we have the Generative AI Hub. And this Generative AI Hub is a way of where you can access, manage, and deploy various different um, large, get access to large language models and then build your own a custom AI <coughs> capabilities. And for today, I thought I'd take an interesting example to ask and show you what is the difference between leveraging different large language models. And here I thought that I show you what are the different models available at the minute, yeah, so that you can see what is out there, what you can even flip between. Because if you think about building something yourself, you often go into, okay, which model should I actually use? And often we just think, okay, GPT, because it's the biggest one, it's the most known one, that's why we want should be going into this area. But is it really the best one for your use case? And I will show this on a particular example. So, you, I asked, for, I went into our playground and I asked it, why do Turks love to put yogurt on almost everything? And you can see we selected the 3.5 model and you have seen that here now are these different models that you can switch in between. And we selected now the Anthropics model. So just you can see here in the, on the top, we selected the Anthropics model and we changed the reply. And again, put the same request in. And you can see now here of how much more of a, like a response it came back to with all of these different areas that you have seen here. So what I really want to highlight here is that Switching between these different large language models can really make also a difference for you and your particular areas that you can drive in your business. And because this, you can access all of the different leading models throughout the software. And there are two main things that I want to highlight. Because all of this sits on this platform, the SAP Business Technology Platform, it already has a secure access in the meaning that we have built-in governance build in authentication, build in identification. So you don't need to worry about all the security part. And the second thing is that we have a data protected. Everything that you put in here, or even also because, again, we're using this ourselves to build Joule, to build the embedded AI capabilities. We have agreements with these vendors that they, of course, can process your query because you want to get a reply back to it, but they can't store it or can't use it for retraining purposes. And this is a big difference if your employees would go over to ChatGPT and ask it any kind of business-related questions because what happens then with your data? So using it through us, you get a secure and you get a data-protected access. <coughs> so if you now think about building your AI applications, which again comes either on a silver plate surf from us if you want to use Joule or embedded AI capabilities, or if you want to build things yourself, there is still something when you're building yourself or when you're preparing a journey for AI, which is obviously just the AI application, it's the tip of the iceberg. But there might come something below, and this is what we've heard before. There we, nope, sorry. It is the, tip, it's the underlying part of the iceberg, which is the data part, because we've heard your AI is only as good as your data. Well, again, with these embedded capabilities and Joule, we're taking care of all the building, of all the training. We have also done the training on our business data that we have acquired. But obviously, data is still a big part of your organization. So we give you also tools to prepare your data for AI. And we're doing this in three different ways. We first can give you a way of how you can harmonize your data across various different sources, for example, even to hyperscalers, like for example, Google, to bring all of this together and really create this harmonized layer. 
instead of ripping the data out, out of its context, right? We heard this from yesterday before. Instead of ripping it out of its context, we're le letting it be in these different areas and we have a, putting a layer on top, this is the business data fabric layer that really allows it to harmonize all of the different data sources. Then we also give you a way of how you can ground your data, right? We talked about it before. Grounding just makes sense in the sense that you don't want your AI to hallucinate. You want it to come back with the right answers. And how do you get the right answers? Well, you need to provide it with the right answers that you want it to come back to. For Joule, we have already very easily implemented that you can just upload your documents, for example, on a SharePoint, and then it will take it from there. But again, if you want to build something yourself, and if you want to enrich more and more, we have tools of how you can really ground your AI so it comes back with the right answers and doesn't hallucinate. And last but not least, we also have ways of how you can discover hidden insights across your organizations, where we understand the different lineage between these different heterogeneous landscapes that you have put together and harmonized, and then brought them together in this one simple layer. Well, from here, there is this question of how to get started. And one of the parts that I can highly emphasize is that each of you might be thinking differently about where to start. And we want to invite you, just we can have this conversation with you to really go into, okay, what is the best way for you to start? Is it by having a dual activation? Or is it by going deeper into some kind of like custom AI? Or is it something to embed AI capabilities and activate these? So this is specific to what your organization needs. And we would love to have this conversation with you to talk about what is the right way forward. So what could be potential next steps outlined here? So please come and talk to us. Please come and engage with us. There's so much what we can do together. And with that, thank you very much. And I'm looking forward to inviting you to one special part that we have out there today, which is the Apple Vision Pro. If you have done your analytics in some form, right, on your computer, probably like moving some numbers, I promise you, this is a different experience. You can talk to Joule, and literally you have the diamond on your hand, and you can open up Joule and ask it to interact with you across these like different landscapes. You can zoom into your data, you can see from the different store locations of where your data is there. So we have this here also today for you, so please, Use it outside, and with that, thank you very much. I hope we gave you a better overview of like what are the different Joule capabilities, what is embedded AI in terms of examples, and how you can build your custom AI and prepare your data for AI. With that, thank you very much.